This video is sponsored by AG1. We only have 23 early bird discount spots left for the new premium video library. Details at the end of this video. In this video, I'm going to cover the most likely reasons you're not improving in your climbing. This can be directed from anyone from the advanced beginner hitting their first plateau to the seasoned climber who has held steady in the grades but never made that breakthrough. I'm going to start with one of the most avoided topics in climbing and probably all of sports, overtraining. Yes, there is such a thing as doing too much. Many of you may be familiar with the law of diminishing returns, where at some point the amount of input you give starts yielding less and less output to where it's no longer cost effective to give any more input. This applies to training as well. The amount of training you invest in can be very subjective and depends on many factors like your age, experience, and level of athleticism. Overtraining for one person might just be another day in the office for a competitive athlete, so I'll leave you with some general guidelines and questions you can ask yourself. How often are you training and at what intensity? If you don't currently follow a training plan usually created by a coach or trainer and are just climbing for your training, it's very important to self-monitor and avoid overdoing it. For example, if you're going to do a high-intensity, power-focused bouldering session one day, don't do it again the very next day. Vary the intensity and areas of focus. A typical rotation I like for back-to-back -back days is power and strength climbing through hard boulders on day one, and more endurance or power endurance-based climbing through ropes or easy boulders on day two. Are you prioritizing your training above your climbing? Training and climbing have a fair overlap, but can be very different. Depending on what your training plan is, sometimes it doesn't involve climbing that new set of boulders with your friends. It might just be a hangboard session or four by fours on climbs you've already done. When you have a training day, make sure you focus on that first and foremost. Don't warm up for two hours, give several try hard burns on the Praj, and then start training when you're already depleted. Stay focused on the mission, get it done, and then leave. One of the things that helps with my training is having a great nutritional drink. So I wanna thank the kind folks at AG1 for sponsoring this video and sending me a product that ties in seamlessly with my lifestyle. I prefer to get my training done earlier in the day and drinking AG1 provides me with the energy and nutrients to get through my workouts. It's tricky to find the right balance of food to eat before I train. A meal can be too much, but going fasted can also leave me feeling depleted before the end of the workout. AG1 is kind of the perfect solution for me. Mixing a scoop is super convenient, the taste is pleasant, and it gives me the right feeling of fullness. The vast blend of nutritional benefits it offers also means I don't have to stress about missing my nutrient quota. If you want to make a great addition to your active lifestyle, give AG1 a try. Head to my link in the description below to get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. What is your training to rest ratio? Okay, how often do you hear this in the gym? Yeah, this is my fourth day on. It's like they know they're hosing themselves but are still low key proud about it. I've definitely done that many times. When you get serious about your training though, you'll understand the importance of rest days. I like to keep a one to one train to rest ratio or a maximum two to one. This means I don't train or climb for more than two consecutive days before taking at least one rest day. On the flip side of overtraining is under recovering. In the trifecta of athletic improvement, recovery is arguably the most important. And so when all that abuse and weakening you've done to your body during training heals and regenerates into a stronger version of you. Most people think of training as when they make gains. Nope, the gains are made during recovery. Similar to how overtraining has become glamorized, so has under recovery in some way. Grind mindset, hustle life, I'll sleep when I'm dead. These are all things I've espoused and embraced at some point. 
Not saying there isn't a time and place to go hard, but it certainly has to be balanced with recovery. To help you determine how well you do with recovery, ask yourself these questions. Am I getting consistent quality sleep? For most athletes, including myself, I need at least eight hours of sleep per night, sometimes more if I've trained hard that day. There are so many studies that show how important sleep is to recovery, athletic performance, and mood. You can watch any interview with Andrew Huberman and see for yourself. The key words in this question are consistent and quality. Consistent means steady and predictable. Not 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. one day, 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. another day, 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the weekends. Quality means well-prepared and curated. Not falling asleep with your phone in your hands or with the TV on. Not immediately after a greasy meal or a night of drinking. For this to work and you actually reap the benefits, it needs to be both consistent and quality sleep. Are you getting enough quality nutrition? Okay, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to include the nutrition component along with recovery. I feel like diet and nutrition can be incredibly subjective and it's important for me to keep this on general terms. With that said, if you've already found the diet that's most optimal for you, are you eating enough? Are you eating the right things before and especially after your workout? For me, if I'm working out earlier in the day, I prefer a much lighter meal before the gym and then really load up on my macros after my workout. I strongly adhere to the method of fully replenishing post-workout because that's when your body is weakened and most starved for nutrition. Do you practice good recovery habits? Besides working hard, eating, and sleeping well, you will need some auxiliary practices to keep the body well maintained. There are a plethora of tactics to aid you in your recovery, each with their own science-backed research. Here are the ones that work best for me. I have two massage tools that I swear by, a vibrating foam roller and a massage gun. I use the foam roller for my forearms and fingers and the massage gun to get my traps, upper back, and shoulders. Just some daily maintenance makes a huge difference in reducing soreness and speeding recovery. At my old gym, we had a sauna and I love to alternate between the hot therapy with the cold showers. In place of that now, I just start with a hot shower and finish with about one to two minutes of cold water. It helps with any inflammation and soreness and preps my body for sleep by lowering my core temperature. This last portion will focus on your approach to climbing. I found that many people have the work ethic to bring themselves to the gym, but tend to avoid doing the necessary things that will actually help them improve. Here are some of the most common mistakes I see in people's approach to climbing. Focusing only on one grade instead of climbing in a range of grades. I completely understand this logic. With the natural gamification of climbing grades, it makes sense to conquer one grade before progressing to the next. However, grading can be fairly subjective. The movement and strength requirements on one climb can differ drastically from another of the same grade. Therefore, it's important to include a range of grades so that you not only expose yourself to a higher movement vocabulary and power demands, but also push your strengths on harder climbs and shore up your weaknesses on easier climbs. You'll also gain a lot of confidence and mental satisfaction from working on harder climbs. A lot of seasoned sport climbers will avoid bouldering. They have great endurance, but are not willing to work on their power by looking like a fool falling on hard moves. Many skinny climbers with strong fingers will stick to technical crimp lines all day, but avoid the thuggy overhang. Outdoor purists will not touch anything with a dyno or coordination move. This is something that everyone is guilty of. Nobody wants to address their weaknesses because to do so means to fail in front of people. Even worse, it can damage the self-image they've built up as a climber. But at some point, you have to ask yourself, do I want to stay the same? or am I willing to embrace some discomfort to improve? The theme for this video is something I like to call selective discipline. Most of you already have the discipline to put in the time and effort. I'm simply helping to redirect your focus to the things that give you the highest returns. This includes doing the things you don't think are fun or tend to avoid. And it certainly involves not doing some things. Don't be selective with what you're disciplined about. Commit fully and reap the benefits. And until next time, move better, climb harder. The early bird spots for the new Movement for Climbers video library are almost gone. 
This new membership video library is where I go truly in depth on all the most asked about climbing topics from my YouTube channel. This is content created with the goal of helping you find your weak points ASAP and improve your climbing in 30 days. The new premium content not available on YouTube is released for members several times a month with more special features planned. This is the type of library I wish I had when I started climbing. Use the code CLIMBHARDER for 30% off your first two periods. With monthly or yearly membership options, that means you can lock in up to two years at 30% off. There are only 23 early bird discount spots left and this will be the last early bird deal, so do not miss out. Go to movementforclimbers.com and use code CLIMBHARDER to save 30%. I've also included this info in the video description below. This membership comes with a seven day free trial and 30 day money back guarantee. Come see if it's right for you. If you haven't improved your climbing in 30 days or you just find it's not what you're expecting, let us know why and we'll give you a full refund, no questions asked. Altogether, that's 37 days risk-free.